Okay, welcome back. Now, before we actually do some examples, I just wanted to clarify one important topic. With simple harmonic oscillation, we can describe how fast something oscillates by using three different things. We can use the frequency, the period, or the angular frequency to describe it. Now, in this video, what we're going to do going to do is we're going to look at the definitions of all three, see how all three ideas relate to each other. So let's first start off by talking about frequency. Frequency is typically denoted with an F or occasionally the Greek letter nu, which is like an odd looking V. And this describes, uh, this is equal to the number of cycles of oscillation the system does in a certain amount of time. Typically, the standard definition is the number of cycles per second. Now, as a result, the unit of frequency is hertz, which is defined as 1 over second, essentially the units of a number of cycles divided by the units of time. Now, what you may see that from time to time is some people may say that Frequency is cycles per second. Now, if cycles isn't actually a physical unit or a physical dimension, it's just used for bookkeeping. Essentially, putting it there just helps us keep track of everything. So, let's talk about period now. Period is typically denoted with a capital T, and that's by definition the time it takes to undergo a certain number of cycles. And the standard definition is just the time it takes for one cycle. So therefore the units of period are the units of time divided by units of number of cycles, which is just seconds. So units are seconds. And like we said before, sometimes we like to bookkeep, and although it's not actually a unit, we may put cycles, just to keep, keep everything in order. Now, we know that frequency is inversely related to peri the period, which means that f is equal to 1 over t, or t is equal to 1 over f. Now, before we actually go on, I just want to make sure like, we understand what this means graphically. So let's take a look at this sine wave I have here. If I were to say that, well here's the time axis and here's, let's just say, some length, we're just going to call it x. If I were to say that at this point in the time axis, right here, is one second. In that case, what is the frequency and what is the period for this sine wave? Now let's take a look. So we start off here, we undergo one complete cycle of oscillation and get to this point. Then we undergo another complete cycle of oscillation, get to this point, And we undergo one last cycle of oscillation and get here. So in one second, we undergo three cycles of oscillation. So what this means is that our frequency is three cycles per one second, or three hertz. Now, let's take a look at the period. The period for one oscillation is the length of time for that one oscillation. And now we know that, now we know that each oscillation takes the same amount of time. So if it, we can do three oscillations in one second, that means our period is one-third second. Essentially, each oscillation takes a third of a second. Okay, so now let's talk about angular frequency. Angular frequency, which is denoted by omega, is a rotational analog for frequency. So, while well, frequency describes the uh, number of oscillations in a certain amount of time, what angular frequency does is it'll describe the amount of rotation or 
the amount of angle traversed in a certain amount of time. So we can roughly say that that's equal to the angle traversed in a certain amount of time. Now, the way we typically measure angular frequency is in units of radians per second. Now, now to get a, a better sense of this, let's actually take a look at something that's oscillating in a circle. So, let's take a look down here. Let's say we start off at this point here, and we're oscillating not by going back and forth, but by going around and around in a circle. If we were to go around the circle a certain number of times in a given, like, say, about a second or so, what would be the angular frequency? So a good way to do this out is just to think of angular frequency as the number of radians per cycle times the number of cycles per unit time or second. So let's take a look. If we're actually going around in a circle, we know that a full circle is 360 degrees or two pi radians. So we say that this is two pi radians per cycle. And the measure of number of cycles per second is frequency. So we can say that angular frequency omega is just two pi times our frequency. Essentially, we're converting our frequency to our angular frequency by multiplying by a factor of 2 pi radians. Now, since frequency is defined as 1 over the period, this also means that the angular frequency can be defined, can be defined as 2 pi divided by the period. Okay, so now I want to go over one fairly subtle point. And that is that there is a difference between the units of angular frequency and the actual physical dimensions of angular frequency. The units of angular frequency are, as we said earlier, radians per second. However, we're going to show that radians is what we like to call a dimensionless unit. Although it's kind of like uh, what we did with earlier by saying cycles. It's not actually representing anything physical like length or time or mass, but it really helps uh, help with bookkeeping. So what this actually means is, in terms of actual di physical dimensions, the dimensions of angular frequency are one over a second, which is hertz. Now, you may think that this is fairly obvious, uh, considering uh, the actual dimensions of frequency are 1 over hertz, and all we did to get angular frequency is just multiply it by a constant. So you could probably say that, that a constant times one something 1 over seconds is still going to be in terms of 1 over seconds. The reason we, why we include radians is just to help keep in mind that we're working with angles. Now, in order to like hammer this home, I just want to give you two other quick explanations as for why radians is what we like to call a dimensionless unit. For the first one, let's go back and talk about what we already know, uh, the mass and spring system. We know from there that the angular frequency omega is equal to the square root of the stiffness of the spring divided by the mass of the block. Now, the units for stiffness of a spring are newtons per meter, which is equivalent to kilograms per second squared. And the mass of the block is given in dimensions of kilogram. So let's just take a look and see what the dimensions are for the right-hand side. We get kilogram per second squared divided by kilogram all under a square root. So the kilograms cancel 
and we're left with square root of 1 over second squared, which is just 1 over seconds. So this is the dimension of our angular frequency. Notice that there's no radian term. That's because radian doesn't actually correspond to something physical. Like, there's no radians in terms of the definition of spring stiffness or mass. So this is kind of like what we mean by saying that radian is a dimensionless unit. Now, the other way to look at this is, let's take a look at the actual definition of radian. A radian, by definition, is the ratio of an arc length, let's just say this right here, to its radius. So, radian is equal to arc length. over radius. Now, therefore the dimensions of radians is equal to the dimensions of arc length divided by the dimensions of the radius. Well, arc length is measuring a length, so its dimensions are length, which is in terms of meters. Radius is also a length, so its dimensions is also in terms of meters. And now we get meters over meters. This cancels, and we're left with one. So the dimension for radians is one. And that's kind of like what we say when we say that it's dimensionless. Now, the reason I'm beating this over the head is a lot of times a very common uh, mistake a lot of physics students make is that when they're doing dimensional analysis, they'll look at, they won't actually find the radian term even though the units for angular frequency are radians per second. So they'll think that, okay, we drop the radian term, that must mean that we have to multiply or divide by an extra factor of 2 pi, which can give some incorrect answers. So really just want to emphasize, radians are basically a reminder that we're working with angles, and really a reminder that we're working with, we're working with angles in terms of radians, not angles in terms of degrees. So let's go back for a bit. Here we have a relationship that describes our angular frequency, our frequency, and our period. So let's take a look at how we'll more or less see this in the context of simple harmonic motion. What this basically means is that if we have cosine omega t, that this is equal to cosine of 2 pi f t which is equal to cosine of 2 pi times our time divided by the period. Now, just to reinforce this one last time, let's take a look at the units inside each of the cosine arguments. Here, the units for omega is radians per second, and we're multiplying that by time, which is in units of second. So seconds cancel, and basically we have inside the cosine, we're left with radians. So we know that's dimensionless, and now we have a reminder that we're working with a certain number of radians, not a certain number of degrees. Now, now same thing here. Although we can look at the dimensions and say that the dimensions of the inside are 1 over a second times seconds, and we get that the inside is dimensionless, we could say that the units are 2 pi radians, whoops, radians per cycle times cycle per second times second. So we get that the units on the inside are radians, which are dimensionless, essentially reminding us what we're working with angles. And same thing here, we get 2 pi radians per cycle times seconds times t, and then dividing by seconds per cycle, which is essentially the same as multiplying by cycles per second. And we get that all the units cancel, and we're left with units of radians, which are, as we said, dimensionless. So let's take a look at what we did. We found, well, we talked about the definitions of 
frequency, period, and angular frequency. We talked about what the units for each are, and we talked about what the physical dimensions of each are. So essentially, if you were to ever seen a problem, if you were to ever get some, a term cosine of, say, 4t, we now know we can, from this, we can extract the angular frequency, the frequency, and the period. Now, using that, let's do some examples. So, see you in the next video.